so we stay in South America, tropical uh, areas with uh, Maria Manzano from Brazil, and she will talk about beta diversity. Are you there, Maria? Six. Hi. Hi, we can see you, we can hear you, and we see ah, okay. your PDF. So just okay. full screen and it will be perfect. Okay, thank you. Thank you, whenever you like. So hello everyone. Uh, today I will present part of the work carried out during the sandwich period of my master's at the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid, uh, with collaboration of Larissa Sugai, Ricardo Savaya, and Diego Lucia. I am Maria Carolina, and my work is titled Turning Acoustic Communities, Phylogenetically Functional and Acoustic Beta Diversity. So uh, the huge diversity of sounds produced by animal communities varies across time and space and has been widely studied today. The alpha-acoustic diversity, for example, or pearly acoustic diversity, consists basically of the diversity of sounds recorded in a given place. And many studies show that as the species richness increases, acoustic diversity also increases. Similarly, phylogenetic and functional diversities, out out less studied, also seem to be related to the acoustic diversity. On the other hand, little is now about beta acoustic diversity. So the beta diversity is the variation of composition and in our case, acoustic composition between sites. And we still don't understand how acoustic space vary between communities. So one of the obstacles to studying beta acoustic diversity is related to accurate knowledge of the species composition in this 2D area. And in this sense, both beta acoustic diversity and the relationship between acoustic and functional diversities uh, can help us to implement conservation measures. So in this work, we choose uh, the coral systems formed by endurance, since this group seems to be the ideal model for investigating acoustic patterns within and between communities. Our aims were to investigate the acoustic beta diversity, besides to understand whether acoustic diversity is related to phylogenetic and functional diversities. We expected a relationship between acoustic diver diversity and different measures of uh, diversity as a species richness, phylogenetic diversity, and functional diversity. We also expect, uh, expected that the possible beta acoustic diversity was due to the species turnover, explained by the high richness and beta diversity in the Atlantic forest for the endurance. So we collected acoustic data in species composition of 10 different underground communities in the Atlantic Forest in southeastern Brazil uh, from 6 p.m. until 2 a.m. during 52 days uh, and during the rainy season between September 2018 and March 2019. So the species composition of communities was determined by active search and auditory monitoring around the pond and out out the acoustic space is commonly registered through remote recorders. In this work, we collect individuals manually through individual recordings using a digital recorder and a directional microphone. So the recorded advertisement calls were analyzed in Haven Pro. We selected five consecutive calls per individual and estimated uh, the dominant frequency and frequency range, that is the maximum frequency minus the minimum frequency. So the acoustic diversity was estimated in two different ways. In the first, we estimate the species number in 10 different bins or categories uh, of frequency values between 650 hertz and 6,500 hertz. In the second way, through a new model approach, we're considering each individual in each uh, community to calculate the acoustic diversity. So uh, functional traits of these two species were determined based, based on two papers and one thesis, and our final database contained 20 categorical functional traits. Uh, we calculated the phylogenetic species variability using a phylogenetic database and a community composition matrix. Uh, this index, PSV, uh, returns a phylogenetic diversity index independent of species richness. And to calculate the beta acoustic diversity, we use the acoustic diversity based on frequency beams or frequency categories 
for that, we calculated an overall beta diversity index based on the Sorens based multiple site dissimilarity and assess uh, the turnover and nestedness components. So we recorded a total of 178 individuals for 18 species of endurance, and we analyzed 1,612 advertisement calls uh, in 10 different communities. Uh, the species richness was on average 4.6, and spawning size, overposition site, habitat and microhabitat were more diverse among the species uh, regarding the functional diversity. And uh, we also estimated the phylogenetic diversity of each community and we found four different families. So from the acoustic diversity calculated based on uh, the frequency beams and individual variation, we observed that acoustic diversity was not influenced by species richness nor phylogenetic diversity. Um, we also, uh, as we can see, uh, in the image related to the individual variation. So this is the acoustic diversity related to the individual variation, and this is the species richness and phylogenetic diversity um, independent of species richness. So we also observed that from the individual values collecting the field, the acoustic diversity is influenced by the functional diversity. So uh, we have here the functional diversity and the acoustic diversity based on individual variation, mostly the dominant frequency, and we observed a positive relation. So regarding the beta acoustic diversity, we found a large variation in species composition and acoustic composition of communities based on frequency range, mainly determined by the turnover component, uh, as we can see here in the table. So this is the uh, beta diversity for the community composition and the frequency range and the turnover uh, component seems to be the, the more important. So by evaluating communities pairwise similarities through a correlation test, we observed that similarities in dominant frequency across communities were correlated with compositional similarities. And we conclude that species richness and phylogenetic diversity does not seem to contribute to acoustic diversity in our case. And despite this, some work being carried out in our lab show us that when we considering the individual variation of the dominant frequency in each community, the acoustic diversity seems to be related to the functional diversity. So our data is capable to see this relationship. And finally, and this is our take home message, I think, we also reinforce the importance of fine data such as the dominant frequency of each individual of each community uh, to more accurately access acoustic diversity. So I would like to thank several institutions and I also thank the financial support during the conduct of the work provided by the agencies, agencies uh, FAPESP, CAPS and CNPK from Brazil. And uh, thank you for, our for your attention. Thank you very much, Monica. Uh, Maria, sorry. Um, do you have any questions for Maya? About frogs, communities in Brazil. Species variation, each animal or each yes. species. Okay, okay. Can, can you repeat it so that anyone can hear it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, each individual of each species. So uh, we. I collect uh, 18 species, different, uh, different across the community. So I recorded um, five individuals for each species, and for each individual, I have uh, a mean value of dominant frequency, for example. And uh, based on this, I calculate we calculate this uh, acoustic uh, diversity. I, I don't know if if I respond. It seems yes. Uh, Luan asked, do you think your results uh, relate with body size? As you mentioned, dominant frequency is correct. Yeah, we, we test this and we don't find another relation. And uh, we test in several works, uh, actually, and I don't see a pattern with uh, uh, dominant frequency, between dominant frequency and body size, actually. It's a, a lot to discuss about this, I think. Okay. 
And as a side project or maybe a project, did you consider using uh, uh, eco-acoustic recordings of the full community and to see how the species uh, potentially partition uh, mm -hmm. the, the space and how it could be related to phylogenetic uh, distance, actually? Yeah. Uh, uh, all this is part of the of our manuscript. So we test the phylogenetic signal, and we find a phylogenetic signal uh, between some species. So the Indropsophus, for example, um, and the niche um, partitioning was. Uh, we will test this. It okay. is in, in our plan. Yeah, it would be complementary to what you exactly. just uh, showed. Excellent. Okay, so we've reached. 10 minutes, so thank you very much, Maya. Thank, thank you. you, nice talk, nice research. Thank you. So the next.